we derived the following strains for the Ole Bernoulli beam and the Timoshenko beam. We added the bending strain in the Ole Bernoulli beam, caused the rotation of the neutral axes and the cross section, and the cross section remains perpendicular to the neutral axes before and after deformation. Whereas for the Timoshenko beam, we had bending, which rotates the neutral axes and the cross section, and shear, which further rotates the neutral axes without rotating the cross section. So for the Timoshenko beam, plane sections remain plane, but not perpendicular to the neutral axes after deformation. Now for a fiber on that cross section, let's set a distance y from the neutral axes, where we take y being positive upwards. The sagging moment causes a tensile stress in the bottom of the beam and compression in the top of the beam. And we derive the bending stress as equal to the negative of the bending moment by y on the second moment of area. So for a sagging moment which is positive and a fibre below the neutral axis where y is negative, we have a positive bending stress which signifies tension. And the bending stress is equal to the Young's modulus by the bending strain. So if we substitute for the bending strain, we obtain the following expression. And we can cancel out the y's and the negatives and write the bending moment in terms of the curvature due to bending. And that's our first equation, which is applicable to both beams. Now for the Timoshenko beam, we need to use an additional relation, being the constitutive relation between the shear stress and shear strain, which is related by the shear modulus. And if we first assume that the shear stress is uniform on the cross section, then we can write this as the shear force on the cross sectional area. And then substituting for the shear strain, we have the following expression. Now because we know that the shear stress distribution is parabolic, so for example with this rectangular cross section it looks something like this, and the shear stress is a maximum at the centroid. So what we do is multiply the cross-sectional area by a correction factor. And now if we solve for the shear force, we obtain the following expression. But recall that our sign convention was positive. We had a shear couple acting as follows and sagging moments on the cross-section. So this shear couple would distort the section as follows, which basically causes a clockwise shear deformation. And we had counterclockwise angles as positive, so therefore a positive shear couple would cause a negative shear deformation. Whereas a negative shear couple would cause a positive shear deformation. So therefore we can rewrite this expression as follows. And we can integrate these expressions to obtain the deflections and rotations of the Timoshenko beam. And recall the derivative of the bending moment is equal to the shear force, and the derivative of the shear force is equal to the negative of the uniformly distributed load. So therefore you can obtain further equations that describe the behaviour of the beam. So for example by differentiating this equation 
and then equating these two, which I'll leave for you as an exercise.